Good day fellow investors, in a recent video I asked you which stock do you want me to analyze and the predominant answer was Intel. So I started to dig into Intel a few days ago and research more because it was interesting, 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 fundamentals, strong fundamentals, growth ahead, everything fitted the value investment perspective. So in this video I'll save you a few days of research and I'll summarize my findings, my investment thesis, and my thoughts about Intel. And the most interesting thing is that it reminds me very strongly of Apple in 2016, which is something we are going to discuss as we discuss Intel's stock price, because in the stock price lies the opportunity. Now it's cheap. We'll discuss why and whether that is an opportunity for long-term investors. Then we'll discuss Intel's business, the cycle within the business, this perspective on the business and what Intel is doing apart from what is the noise in the media. We'll discuss the fundamentals and then we'll discuss the valuations. I have made a few valuation models based on what we can expect from the earnings, from the company, conservative scenarios without too much exuberance. And yes, Intel is going to lose market share definitely but we have to see what will happen most certainly from an investing perspective. And I'm going to finish by discussing my action on the stock because I have been buying Intel stock. So this will be an analysis where I actually hold something, I actually have a stake in the company, 7% of my portfolios, and I'll discuss why I have bought Intel because I see it as a very positive risk reward situation. Now let's start with digging deeper into the stock price. If you look at the stock price, you see that Intel's stock price over the last few years has been very volatile, but in the range up to almost 70, where when it fell under 50, it, it didn't stay there for long and then it often rebounded. So also in this case, it started rebounding as Intel announced the buybacks, which we'll discuss later but all in all your interest for the stock was probably because it's a blue chip it has a low price earnings ratio in the current environment is a tech stock and it has also a dividend that is let's say good in this environment now this really reminds me of apple in 2016 i wrote an article about apple how it has a good customer retention rate not 100 percent but good how the price earnings ratio was around 10 while the price earnings ratio of the S&P 500 was about 20 and how Apple is a blue chip and how over the next 40 years investors will do really really well. Well the result was really remarkable but there was something else that's more important than what happened afterwards. I wrote in 2016 how they, the sea of analysis on Apple and talk about the disruptive or non-disruptive in the new iPhone currently with Intel AMD competition chips, is Intel still at the forefront of the industry or not? What I missed and what I miss now with Intel is a down-to-earth analysis of the long-term returns an investor can expect from the current stock price in relation to the long-term most likely certain fundamentals. And that's also what we are going to discuss with Intel. Further, another comparison to Apple. In 2019, and we'll discuss this later also in the downgrades, I discussed how same old story with Apple. People don't, the market doesn't understand its cycle. How it's normal to have good and bad news and how you need to own the business if you want to be an investor. The rest are noise speculators and those never do well because a lot of people were selling Apple here imagining let's say low growth ahead. Low growth ahead is what happened but the stock price reacted pretty significantly. And that's also the message with Buffett's approach to Apple. I own the business, I look at the fundamentals, if I like it I own it and that's also what I doing, I'm doing now with Intel. Yes Sven, but if Intel is so good, why it's going down? Well, if we go to Seth Klarman, the single greatest edge an investor has is a long-term attitude. And here we really have to look at the long-term picture with Intel. Step aside from the short-term noise, 
that is making the stock go up and down and then compare the price to the fundamentals and see whether it is an opportunity over the long term because that's the only advantage we have as would said Klarman say. Now why is Intel stock going down? Why it went down? Well early 2020 this year COVID so it reacted like the market everything was in a big sell-off but then they announced the product delay not the 7 nm product now will be delayed for 2023 or something and the market reacted pretty pretty significantly perhaps creating a good opportunity comparing again to apple i remember since 2013 when i was working at bloomberg i saw this very interesting fact whenever the number of downgrades increases and people and analysts start saying it's a sell it's a hold it's not more a buy those were usually the best times to buy apple stock because analysts have a short-term perspective on the business they are not investors they are analysts paid to tell you where will the stock go in the next 12 months so if you do the opposite of what analysts say like in this case with Apple, you might do really, really well as an investor. Also, if we look at the current perspective on Intel, just a few months ago, Goldman Sachs upgraded the stock. Now the scenario has changed and they are downgrading the stock again because they reduced their 2021-2022 earnings estimates and therefore they are taking a more cautious investment approach but Intel is not about what will happen over the next year or two it's about much much more as you will see in this analysis one analyst downgrades everybody downgrades so no viable roadmap roadmap to remain competitive next generation chip to be increasingly painful to chip maker so really really a lot of downloads like saying this is now just a cheap stock what Bernstein said that there is nothing else pushing Intel's stock up and here I really want to explain how an investment bank works they got the billions from the millionaire or millionaire clients and they charge those clients and there are a lot of such clients watching this video now that's for I know because they tell me those stories they charge in the investment bank charges 1% of their investment with them no matter what happens and then if you want to retain a customer you need to promise him so it's not just investment bank it's also the investor you need to promise him something that will go up over the next 12 months that's how the majority of the market works the majority of the markets are the majority of investors and they need to promise stocks that will go up with higher targets if something will not go up there are no catalysts then it's time to downgrade it and tell the clients to buy something else this pushes the stock down because if you say okay intel has a 2.68 percent dividend yield and it's possible that it falls another 20 30 percent you might lose your client because there will be somebody else on another investment bank who will say oh i have five great stocks that are likely to go up so that's the investment banking game very very short term because the investors are short term oriented and there is an easy sell this stock will go up there is a tough sell this stock has a good dividend might go up and down but it will be a good long-term investor and investment and you don't actually need me to tell you that so you lose your commission etc trading etc etc so keep in mind how investment banks work when it comes to intel stock downgrades we have here a few of them the downgrade wasn't such big it was around approximately 10 percent the stock price reacted 20 percent because if the stock is not going up then it can only go down but when it comes to product delays and here we can discuss the noise that's surrounding discussions of intel product delays are normal in such a business have been also normal for intel in the meantime the business has been growing and if we look just at what analysts were saying about apple 
just a year and a half, two years ago. So Citi wrote that Apple's China sales could be cut in half due to a less favorable brand image desire. Then Rosenblatt wrote also July of 2019 that the company will face fundamental deterioration over the next 6 to 12 months. This is analysts, they focus on the next 6 to 12 months, so be careful when you listen to them. So we have the Intel stock downgrades, the noise that are based on discussions on competition, on delays, fabrication, will Intel be able to produce their own chips or will have to outsource that losing a lot of the investments in the fab industry, will it go fabless or not, acquisitions, are those smart or not. So there are a lot of noise discussions on small parts of the company, some more significant, some less significant, but then if you as a value investor, you take the worst case scenario, okay, let's say they lose market share, let's say they do this, let's say AMD, Nvidia, they take this, this and this, then you look at what's left, and if you like what's left in the worst case scenario, then you're a value investor, and then all that's left is upside for you. So it's a different investment perspective. That's also the investment perspective on this channel, so please click a like because it means a lot for supporting the channel and subscribe and click that notification bell if you like this mindset and if you enjoyed this analysis and if it is value adding. Thank you very much. Further going on to the discussion between the noise and the fundamentals, if we go to Ben Graham, the market is a voting machine in the short term and the weighing machine in the long term. And that's what we have to see. What is the market voting now and differentiating between what the market will weigh in over the long term. The business, discussing the business, it's data and PC centric, half half of revenues, but the data centric business is growing fast and has increased revenues by nine, by nine billion since 2016. The PC business has profitability, it is a cash cow, and here we can discuss their designs, x86, this and that, softwares of other companies, but the market is what it is and we'll see how that will affect the company over the long term but Intel is not just this. Also in the data centric business still very small percentage of revenues in the IOTG, Mobileye, NSG, memory, programmable semiconductors, all things that will likely grow very very fast over the next decade and might really deliver great returns for Intel like it is the case with the data centric business now. So in the PC market, they are targeting a flat market opportunity. So just trying to keep that cash cow printing money. In the data centric, that's the part they expect to see growing, really making a big impact on the company, really changing the company from where, what it was in 2013. And that's also the noise that's there because this is clearly declining the PC while the data is clearly growing and when it's grow there is a lot of uncertainty and not a lot of unlinear, unlinearity which is normal. But the opportunity is huge from a total addressable market of 60-70 billion. We are talking about 220 billion market and if they just take one small share or higher share or similar share that they have now that will be enough for fundamental investors. From the 5G systems that they are creating, they are still selling, revenues are still growing, autonomous driving, internet of things with the silicon thing that they have. So a lot of opportunities there and we'll have to wait and see how those work. But I don't think that they will be dead as a company in five years. I still think they'll make money and that's also the investment. Everything positive, is an upside. Everything positive like this, Mobileye numbers shipped in 2019, 17.4 million with new deals coming along as the in, when the industry recovers again. So very interesting prospects here too. And this is the key. Over the next three years, low single digits revenue grow, growth, really slow growth. So not fancy, not sexy, just all boring Intel focusing on 
cash flows that will hopefully grow faster their earnings and having attractive capital returns. This might be slower, faster, but that's what the market doesn't really like because we are in an all growth market, nothing else matters and slow growth isn't really attractive. But if you read, if you listen to the conference call, if you read the transcript and you can pause this video and read a little bit more about what the CEO is saying. So from 5G outbuilds, uh, data and mobility as a service technologies, big market ahead, and they are making big bets to cater for these markets. So there is more to Intel than what the market is just focused now. And there forecasts this might not be six dollar dollars per share in 2022 might be let's say four dollars which is still good which is still just a price earnings ratio of 12 but the key is what will happen beyond 2023 that's what a long-term advantage is what will intel look like beyond what we know and we can model and that's what you are investing in if you're buying intel now because we have to see what all these acquisitions will bring to Intel, to interest revenue, to profits over the long term, as they have the base to scale all these things. They have the highest investments in the industry, 15 billion per year, or twice what Nvidia and AMD are investing together. Also, they invest, they make acquisitions, artificial intelligence, chip maker, Habana Labs, you never know what kind of outcomes which su will such investments bring. Also, graphic processing unit, the big market opportunity there, they already have a 10% market share. And if they have just 10% by 2027, that's likely to be 20 billion in revenues that will cover for the decline somewhere else. So the world is changing, everything is going to be connected. And if this is the future reality we will live in, I think Intel will be a significant player. That's all I need from an investing perspective. And then if we look at the summary of the business, the last quarter, really driven by strength in notebook demand, growth in data centric business, acquisition on Movit, expect to increase our 10 NM based product shipments for the year. So all good, except for this delay uh, in production on the 7nm based CPU product. So that's something that has hit the market. But as I said, over the long term, they still have the business there, the moat. So they still have that cash flow producing that is going to deliver returns over the long term. Also, this is a nice comparison where we compare the revenue of Intel, AMD, Nvidia and Qualcomm. So the market is clearly growing. There are ups and downs for these small companies that have really exploded AMD and Nvidia. Qualcomm has been flat over the last years, but Intel, let's say not linearly, but kept growing and managed to significantly grow. Perhaps there will be another period with slow growth of a few years, but what matters is where will Intel be in 10 years? And if they can double revenues again, in 10 years, double or even more earnings, this will be a good investment. And yes, these guys are the competition, but their revenues is just a small part, 10% for AMD, 15% from Nvidia, small part of what Intel is. So it's not just that. And that's something I think the market is missing due to noise effects. So despite all the noise, the negative sentiment, the bad news, the guidance is still there. 4.85 earnings per share in 2020. That's price earnings ratio of 10, forward price earnings ratio of 10. And the question is, do you like this price, this earnings? Do you like a 10% earnings yield? My best investments over my 20 years in, of investing history have been when I found the business, where I liked what was going on there, no matter the upside or no hopes on just, okay, if they keep it stable over the next 10 years, that's a great investment for me. If I buy that, I can forget about it. And that usually turns out when the market changes in perspective, as we have discussed with Apple, 
then you achieve great returns. And that's why Intel has that, let's say, margin of safety bottom fundamental. Perhaps earnings will be $3 a year. Perhaps the stock will go lower. The buybacks and this will do a good return again over the long term. The stock can go up and down, but you are investing as an, in the business as an owner. And going into the fundamentals, discounted value of the cash that can be taken out of a business during its remaining life should be the focus of every investor, which gives you the intrinsic value. And if we look at cash flows from operating activities, huge cash flows is what Intel has been delivering with 16 billion of free cash flow, likely going to 20 billion this year. So that's a 10% cash flow yield that will reward shareholders over the long term. As they have been doing in the past, 13 billion buybacks 2019, 10 billion just announced now. And this means that the company is shareholder oriented. Yes, there will be ups and downs. They are also doing huge investments, as I mentioned, much more than any other competitive. And this should lead to good returns over the long term to a good market position. And that's all I need. If we look a little bit at the fundamentals, the revenues have almost doubled over the last 10 years, grew at a 7% rate per year. Net income grew even faster and then earnings per share even more because the company did a lot of buybacks. So really lowered the numbers of shares outstanding by 25%. Also, they doubled the dividend. So it, it is a dividend growth stock. And the key here is the free cash flows now 22 billion huge capital investments there. If you want to read this into more in a peaceful environment, and if you prefer reading, you can always check this article on my blog. I'll put the link in the video description below. And rewarding shareholders is the key. As Buffett said, what can be taken out from the company to reward the shareholders? And here we talk about buybacks. I like buybacks when those are made when the stock is cheap. I don't like buybacks when those are made when the stock is expensive. But the com when a company makes buybacks on a stock that I'm buying too, that I would buy too, then that is a good thing. And buybacks are a very, very powerful tool for Intel stock and in investment in Intel now. And we have to discuss here the Intel buyback effect and the recent 10 billion accelerated share repurchase that they have announced. Let's compare this to Apple. Apple, as those analysts discussing Apple in 2015-16 were completely right, didn't really grow revenues. Net income, we can say it's practically flat. So nothing special there. Those analysts were correct. But the fundamentals improved significantly. Earnings per share went up nine, from $9 per share to four, 13 because shares went down from 5.7 billion to 4.4 billion. Because Apple had the free cash flows, 60, 50 billion per year to do buybacks, to create value for shareholders. And that's why it went from a PE ratio of nine, when everybody was expecting slow or no revenue growth, which was a disaster compared to the previous years, that Apple had huge revenue growth, but it was a change in perspective for the company. And this might also happen for Intel. If revenue doesn't grow, which is probably likely over the next few years, Intel can still be a great investment because of the buyback effect. And the key to understand here is that if Intel does 10 billion in buybacks each year over the next 10 years, and the earnings are flat, the net income is flat, the earnings per share would be double over the next 10 years. Of course, for that, the stock price has to stay flat over the next 10 years, which if they do those buybacks, it's again unlikely. But will Intel make 10 billion, just 10 billion per year over the next 10 years, half of what it's making now in free cash flows? If they do that, you can expect a double return, investment return. So that's the margin of safety. That's the base investment premise behind Intel. Whatever happens with chips, can they do 10 billion? That's something I'll leave for you to answer. Also comparing to Apple, Steve Jobs, the genius, Tim Cook, the boring guy. Okay, 
but really delivered on boring buybacks, small dividend increases, etc., etc. Also, Robert Swan, CFO, really boring guy, CFO, but that's investing, and let's see if delivers if he delivers for shareholders. Also, there is a dividend growing constantly now, already of at 1.32 per share on an annual basis. Just a quick look at the balance sheet. 44 billion in current assets compared to 22 billion in current liabilities. Good indication. Perhaps they can work a little bit on the working capital to release capital from the business, which could add more money for buybacks and financial engineering. The debt, they have taken advantage of the low interest rate environment, so they have increased it. But still, just two years of free cash flows is what the debt is, so not really a concern. Now, when it comes to valuation, I have created three scenarios and then you will discuss, you, you will see, okay, what fits you, what is the risk reward you can take, which is what we will finish with, the risk reward perspective on Intel. I have created these scenarios, so earnings, let's say that they double just thanks to buybacks over the next 10 years, and then, which would lead them from five to $10, and then there is just a 30% growth over the 35%, 3% per year growth from the business. If the valuation stays at the price earnings ratio of 10, the terminal value in 10 years of the stock would be $134, which would lead to a return of 10.51%, total return per year 13% from where we are now, just on buybacks, of course, depending on the stock price if the valuation stays at 10. If the valuation expands like it was the case with Apple, and let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video on the hyperbolic valuation expansion on Apple, that could be a really interesting educative video. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to make that. If we increase the valuation in 2030, then the returns really become staggering. This is the positive outlook market valuation of 20 for Intel in 2030 with growing earnings thanks to buybacks and just a little bit from the business. If there is more growth from the business, from Mobileye or from whatever they're doing, even better, gives you a 20% return. So this is, let's say the margin of safety is a 10% return long term, upside 20, even more if the valuation comes earlier than 2030. But also keep in mind the risk here if the market doesn't like Intel over the next few years, it can be a situation like IBM, of course, volatile stock prices here and there, and then we will follow the situation. I will follow the situation on my stock market research platform. You might want to check that with other stocks that I follow. If you like this long-term investing approach, and there you have all my portfolio, other investment ideas, etc. So you might want to do that, but this is the risk reward huge upside, something like has happened with Apple, could happen. I don't need it five times up, two times up in five years. I'm a very, very happy investor. So all the links to what I do are in the description below. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Check my stock market research platform. I will be seeing you in the next video about interest rates. We had now the Jackson Hole meeting, which will perhaps change the paradigm over the next 10 years when it comes to interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. I'll see you.